Okay, can everyone see that? Yep, great, lovely. Okay, so this morning I'm going to cover um, three areas relating to divestment. Um, I'm going to be um, covering why should the church divest from fossil fuels, then various a description and sharing my experience of various actions and outcomes. And I can see quite a few people in, in, the, in the, the meeting who have taken part in these actions. So that's lovely. And then uh, next steps that you might want to consider to take um, after, after hearing this presentation. So we'll start with um, why should the church divest and invest in climate solutions? And um, so I don't think anyone will be surprised to hear that um, we all know that fossil fuels are the biggest con contributor to global warming. And we all know that politicians, banks, big business are, are heading in the opposite direction and particular fossil fuel companies are heading in the opposite direction for us to stay, have any chance in staying within 1.5 degrees of global warming. So we really know that, that fossil fuels are at the heart of the problem and the, the Ukraine war has, has given extra buns to the, the um, fossil fuel companies to just double down on new excavation in spite of warnings from IPCC and from the IEA. So, um, the, why should, so why should um, churches divest? Well, the Church of England and the Catholic Church in England are the only UK faith institutions with fossil fuel investments. So they're lagging way behind the other faith groups. Just let Jonathan in. Um, so I've only got a couple of <laughs> a couple of minutes to cover this. There's obviously quite a few reasons, and it would be great to hear your your thoughts as well afterwards. But the the first, in fact, what I would really recommend you do is go to the um, Operation Noah webinar, and they've also um, issued a report. And um, so, so they, it, it's called Church Investment in Climate Solutions, Financing a Livable Future. And what they're doing there is to emphasize that the fact that yes, it is, they should divest, but also use their considerable funds to invest in climate solutions. So um, that, that uh, presentation, it was really inspiring, actually. It did give me a lot of hope and Ruth uh, felt that as well, because I know Ruth um, uh, attended it too. So um, they give four reasons why the church should divest um, it from fossil fuels and invest in climate solutions. The first is caring for creation, ecological solidarity. And what they say, we should be urging churches to make their investments align with the values of the church. Investing in a carbon future and business as usual is simply not consistent with those values. And then the second reason is loving our neighbor. So a just change for those affected. The church needs to help those worst affected by the impacts of climate change, for example, investing in renewable energy in the global south. And the, the, the third reason is acting with hope, transformative change and bold action. The people in charge of the money in the Church of England and in any investment management company, they have a responsibility to invest wisely, but they should also be bold and move towards transformative change. And can you imagine if, for example, um, how many young people who really get the climate emergency? I mean, a lot of them are just too scared to, to really take it all on board. But can you imagine if all churches all through the world were investing in, in renewable solution, in renewable energy, in um, electrification of, um, of public transport, of storing um, renewable energy? I mean, it would be immense and it would be a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing if it would make... I feel it would really make faith, um, all the faith or, or um, institutions, and obviously the Christian, the Christian church, really relevant to today's times. And if we just could get people on board, I think it would be wonderful. So, um, and then the last one is investment as prophet prophetic action, and and this idea of radical change. I mean, let's face it: the Christians at the, at the start of, of Christianity were radical people, and we've um, ended up being a very conforming kind of of church in many cases. So, if the and the church's standards must be higher than normal business. I mean, clearly they, they've got a load of money, and they've got to act wisely, and they've got huge portfolios. But they really can, and the Church of England in particular, really can influence the, um, the financial world. And I'll be speaking about that uh, later. And so by moving their investments, um, 
churches could really and the Faith, faith could could really lead the way and and do things that big business, big banking, and and the fossil fuel companies are simply not doing. And then a further reason to divest is the fact that many cler clergy are or should be clergy in the Church of England and in in the Catholic Church in England. They should be feeling really deeply uncomfortable that their pensions are are they're, they're benefiting from the exorbitant profits of the likes of Shell and BP who haven't earned those, shop, those profits. It's just because the scarcity of oil and gas as a result of the Ukraine war is, is pushing all the prices up. And so it's not as if <laughs> there is these false profits um, in, the two, in two different ways of, <laughs> of using the, that term. So, um, so while, while there's all this energy poverty going on and people really struggling, I don't, I don't know how they can sit well with the fact that their their pension is being funded by these these high profits caused by, essentially by people's suffering. So that's um, so that's the, the main reasons that I've I've uh, taken from from the Operation Noah um, webinar as well as as putting in some things myself. Um, so just to give you a snapshot of what's going on with the Church of England, um, the um, Green Bloc are the diocese um, who are already divested and committed to no further investments in fossil fuels. The Amber Bloc, and in fact, dioceses like Truro, they, they, that was a case study during this webinar, they're, they're very proactive in, um, in their approach to investing in climate solutions, and they see this as a, a really positive move forward. Um, and then we have in the Amber Bloc, um, the, the dioceses that don't invest, um, in fossil fuels, but they, but really because their their fund manager, who's essentially C a fund a fund management um, company called CCLA, and they just don't invest in fossil fuels, but not from a, a proactive point of view. They they just um, we just need them to give a firm commitment not to invest in the future. Um, and then the eleven are in the red block are still investing, um, as are the church commissioners and the pensions board to the tune of fifty five million pounds. So if your diocese is in the red block, um, you might want to think about how to get them to change their minds. Um, and I'll talk about next steps at the end of the presentation. But what is really encouraging is that this is my sheet. I, I, um, can, can you see that? So this is, uh, oh, you can't really see it well, but it's nice to see that some of the, the ones in, in the red block are, are coming out of that red block and moving up to the green block. So that's, um, it's encouraging that we're moving in the right direction. And it is a testimony to Operation NOAA and CCA and other local groups that that's happening. Um, so um, what I'd like to um, put up is a quote from um, the, the a, a, uh, rather a summary of what the persistent widow, um, uh, the, the Gospel of Luke says. And so Jesus teaches his disciples that justice has its source in God, though many barriers exist in the world that prevent us from receiving or experiencing justice. We get justice by petitioning the one who brings about justice on the earth. And as Jesus instructs us, we are called to be persistent in prayer, persistent in seeking justice and resilient in everything we do. And, and so if ever there was a call to action, this is it. And believe me, um, when you see some of the, the actions, there are quite a lot of actions that we've done. And um, I, I, I would say that, that persistence has definitely been one of the, um, the strands that go through um, everything that's been done in this, in this area. So um, I must, in fact, this in fact, the CCA have been doing um, divestment actions for some time, and this is the most recent one. So this one was it at Church House and praying and vigils. And, and so many people in this call will, will have been part of these actions. But praying and vigils are very much part of the divestment actions and, and are a very powerful uh, example of nonviolent direct action. So when people who, who aren't Christian see us kneeling there, and I can see that, that there are prayer stools, which Jonathan made for another action. Um, so it, it is a very powerful symbol of, of that peaceful, but very present, um, the, the very presence of us being there praying is, is very powerful. And, and I think that others, um, it, it is a good way of actually showing our, our faith in action. Um, so one of the actions that I, I was involved in was St. Paul's Cathedral, and I'm, I'm sure most of you are aware of this one. And this one was, it was very strategic in the sense that it was aimed at the Diocese of London, who are still investing in fossil fuels. And um, London being the beating heart of the financial world, and um, that's in the UK, but also very influential throughout the world. 
So we planned this uh, in between two weeks of Extinction Rebellion actions and at the beginning of a particularly targeted focus on the City of London, uh, led by Money Rebellion. So um, it was, it was uh, chosen specifically for that. And so during this action, we processed very peacefully to the front. And I think it was Kate who started singing, Oh Lord, Hear My Prayer. And then Karen, Karen Burridge, um, went straight to the pulpit to tell everyone why we were there. Um, and the microphone was switched on, which was very nice of them. And, and at this point, I think the congregation really thought that we were part of the, the service, because at the end of Karen's address, um, there was a round of applause, which was was very heartening. Um, but in the meantime, um, the uh, powers that be at St. Paul's had called the police. And um, so it, we were having sort of quite civilised conversations and negotiations with um, Dr. Paula Gooder, uh, who's a canon chancellor at St. Paul's. And she'd actually mentioned Extinction Rebellion in her sermon, which was really helpful. And then we were also speaking to canon James Milne. But when we said we wouldn't um, move from the centre of the church, which is just under the dome, they left us to be arrested. So we were arrested for aggravated trespass and, um, and spent some of the night in police cells. I was at Bishop's Gate, which was quite ironic, I suppose. <laughs> bishop um, <laughs> and police station called a bishop. Um, in the end, um, though, we weren't charged. And, um, and I think there was a bit of embarrassment, really, um, for, about the reaction to this peaceful process. Um, and so what, uh, so, so, so as you can see here, the, there was also a die-in, um, which accompanies quite a lot of um, these divestment actions. And this is really um, a way of, of getting an emotional reaction to the people who we know are already dying, have died, and will die in the global south, in particular as a result of the climate of climate change. Um, and um, so, a few months later, in April, um, on Monday, Thursday, at the Chrism service, uh, we um, we actually went back to St Paul's, but we didn't go inside. We we were outside, and so the all the diocese of London um, came out to find us at the bottom of the steps with our banner, um, "Church is divest now," and and also a, a die in. And one of the demands that we had at the uh, the, the previous St Paul's action was a meeting with Bishop Sarah Mullally, who's Bishop of London. And a few weeks later, Rachie and I had a meeting with, um, with, with the Bishop and with Chris Harris, who's our finance director, and Brian Cuthbertson, head, head of Environment and Sustainability. And to be honest, we, we felt there was a genuine understanding and a will to divest but not necessarily the power to push it through. And, and in fact, this has sadly proved to be the case. Um, so I've got some breaking news, which I have sent to CCA. Uh, I had a, an email from Bishop um, Sarah yesterday and, um, and it was on divestment and the fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty, which we've been asking the Church of England to sign. And she says, um, both of these matters were on the agenda of our last Bishop's Council, proposing disinvestment from fossil fuels and adoption of the treaty proposal. The proposal for disinvestment did not find favour with members. There was a vote and it was narrowly defeated. <clears throat> this was disappointing and I share your frustration. It was therefore decided not to discuss the treaty proposal as obviously the diocese could not publicly support such a proposal while continuing to invest. But she does end the email with a bit more encouragement. However, this is not the end of the matter. The Diocese Director of Finance and Head of Environment and Sustainability are working on a resubmission of both proposals, which it is intended to bring to another meeting of Bishop's Council in the new year, which I hope will be successful. So a bit of encouragement at the end of the email. And, you know, I can't help thinking that a lot of bishops were following the lead of their boss, um, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who, as, as we all know, has, um, has a past in, in fossil fuels, in, in, in oil companies. So disappointing, but I guess we have to keep, keep being persistent.
Um, I just wanted to uh, show you this one. This was happening at the same time as the St Paul's one in April, and that's where um, some foot washing went on. And um, this was uh, quite a, an intimate and um, it, it, was, it engaged with the clergy on a more intimate and personal basis and included outreach leaflets and banners. And, and I think it was it was quite a lovely, a lovely um, a way of, of, of engaging with, with the clergy. Um, so another another action was at Wells Cathedral. It was similar to St Paul's, um, and in terms of our, our processing to the front after after the uh, at the end of the service, but it had a very different response. And when I think of it, it's quite amazing. We were entirely ignored by the clergy. Not one member of the clergy came to talk to us, to engage with us at all. So we hung around um, and waited. And then a member of the communication team came to speak with us. And to then, uh, and then we eventually did um, uh, arrange a meeting. And it was uh, Sarah MacDonald and Steve um, Jarvis who went to that meeting with Bishop Ruth Worsley. And um, so we wanted um, Wells, Bath and Wells to commit to no further investment in fossil fuels. And, um, and it was a positive meeting um, that Sarah and, and Steve were quite encouraged, but it's still at the same time, Bath and Wells are still on the amber list. So they still haven't committed to no further fossil fuels. Um, so each, each action that we've done has a specific objective. And this, uh, this is a, a very symbolic action happened at Lambeth Palace and, and included the pouring of oil by a bishop, who's Bill, um, over the heads of those dressed in white, um, representing the people of the Global South. And the globe represents our, our wonderful planet, which is being destroyed by, by fossil fuels. And we, we also had, had a die-in. And we handed in a letter at the gate, just uh, that you can see um, just there. Um, it was quite a, an odd situation. So we handed in a letter to um, Justin Welby and um, didn't receive a response, actually. So um, again, we just it, it, we, we seem to be knocking at the door and um, and the, the powers that be are still not answering. But again, we've got just got to maintain that persistence. Um, so another high profile action was the General Synod um, a few days and a few days before Synod, a CCA wrote to all 468 members of Synod asking them to support a motion to approve the Church of England's route map to net zero and to urge all sections of the Church of England to divest from fossil fuels. So we interrupted the uh, session and it was just before the vote to approve the route map, route map to net zero. And some members criticised us for putting the success of the, the vote at risk. But as Sue, um, who I know is on the call, and you can see her on the right hand side, uh, Sue said, well, if they were going to be put off so easily, then, you know, their, their, their resolve couldn't have been that strong. Um, and I'm happy to say that it did go through with a, a large majority. So you can see Sue and Ruth there, um, Sue speaking to Justin Welby, who did agree to a brief meeting afterwards. So the, uh, we met with the Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell, and during the meeting, Justin Welby made his case for continuing investing, um, the continued investment by big corporates in, of oil and gas in the Global South, saying it was up to them to use their natural resources how they liked. Um, and I'm not sure, and maybe Sue can can talk whether any of the arguments that Sue put forward and the rest of us, whether any of that hit home. Um, but I'm praying that um, that we will get through to them eventually. Um, and uh, we certainly have had a lot of attention from these actions and a great deal of support from clergy and and Christians. Um, and what it, what it's done is to push the agenda of the climate emergency. There's so much going on in the world with the war in Ukraine and and the energy crisis, but it has really pushed the um, the, the the climate emergency up the agenda, and we just have to keep on keep on doing that. But the fact remains that 15 dioceses and the church commissioners and the pensions board are still investing uh, about 55 million in fossil fuels, and on the 13th of December. Uh, Ruth and Paul Kunert and I have a meeting with the church commissioners and the pensions board. So I think this was as a direct result of the all of the actions, I guess, you know, just getting the, you know, getting us. I don't think we would have got a seat at the table uh, in any of these meetings had we not done these actions. Um, and so um, 
what we're we're going to try and persuade them to do is to um to think about their 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 hearts as well as their heads um regarding fossil fuel investment and the um the, the fact is that the church of england has a great deal more influence on in the world of finance than 55 million pounds would suggest the cob is um a founder member of the transition pathway initiative and this is a, a tool or a benchmark if you like which assesses companies preparedness for the transition to a low carbon economy and to keep within 1.5 degrees of global warming. And so funds use this as a climate action benchmark, you know, or a, you know, a benchmark against which they can measure companies like Shell, for example. And the TPI is the Transition Pathway Initiative is supported by more than 110 investors with over, and get this, $29 trillion of assets under management. So it's hugely influential <clears throat> in, the, in the world of finance. And the chair of the TPI is Adam Matthews, and he's also Chief Responsible Investment Officer at the Pensions Board for the Church of England. So we're hoping that a meeting with them, if we can, with the, we won't be meeting Adam Matthews, but we'll be meeting um, Gavin Moston and um, Clive, not, not Clive Mather, Mather, it's John Ball. So we're hoping that somehow or another we'll be able to get through and, and that persuasive arguments about the call to mission of the church, you know, it's, it's all very well to be responsible and, and think about, you know, what's high and low risk investments and medium to long term. But at the end of the day, there is a church and they should be thinking more about that and the mission of the church rather than just just the money. Um, and I, I didn't want to miss um, I didn't want to miss out the great work at the Lambeth conference. So this was calling on the Church of England to divest and to sign up to the fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty. And um, you can see there that are a lot of, of, of people from the global south and then a quote um, which um, is at the bottom from that was this was in the Church Times. Um, which I can't really I think the, the yes, I can't really read it very well. Hold on, us um, Christians working together to protect the environment is powerful. Organisations like Christian Climate Action can unite the church. Um, I'll see if I can move this. Yes, I can. Uh, yeah, from different denominations around the world to speak with one voice for environmental protection, as we did at Lambeth Palace. So that's from Archbishop Deng Bo. So you can see that just the these continual chipping away at various people um will will help i believe to finally get the church to divest um so um then the next one hold on oh, don't seem to be able to move that Ah, yes, right. Yes, I didn't want to, I, I'm actually from a Catholic background. I, I grew up a Catholic, cradle Catholic and all that. So I didn't want to miss out the Catholics. Um, and so, um, the, and, and you know, what's really weird is that, you know, Justin Welby doesn't seem to be leading the divestment and, and getting away from fossil fuels, but the Pope is. And his, um, his papal encyclical um, letter from 2015, Laudato Si, is very much about caring for a common home. And it does seem that the others, like the cardinals, bishops, priests, are not really following his lead, which is a great shame. Um, but there we have at the moment, I think this this, this may be um, not up to date, but it's it's from a couple of months ago from the Operation NOAA website. So we've got nine full divestment commitments and 13. And what I would say is that the good news is that this is a changing focus. But if you were thinking about doing an action, I think it's always good to engage with the people first, because it might be that they're on the cusp of changing to um to di to divest from fossil fuels and that goes for the church of england as well as the the catholic diocese so it's it's always a good idea to engage first now just in case they're it, it, you know just in case they're actually on the path and and they might need uh, an action might not be appropriate um, and in fact, in spring this year, we did do um, a die in outside Westminster Cathedral and we spoke with um, with Cardinal Vincent Nichols. Um, and I guess with him, it was similar to the conversation that we had with Justin Welby. Um, he mentioned we must think about the poor in the global south, but somehow he didn't relate the climate emergency and the fact that that's what's impacting them hugely to their plight. And, and then more recently, there was a return visit to, I think it was last month, that um, 
a few people went to Westminster Cathedral again. So um, what can you do? I'll just turn to the, the last bit. Um, uh, things that you might want to consider is find out who has influence and investments in your church or diocese if they're not already divested and start a conversation with them. You don't need to go full Monty and, and um, turn up and, and interrupt a service and um, it, it might just be that it's 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 a good uh, it's start to start a dialogue is, is more appropriate. Um, and then you could join a CCA divestment or prayer vigil or action. Uh, the next one is at Christian Aid because they are considering um, moving away from Barclays, which would be great. Um, and I think that the details of that are still to be um, arranged. And that, so that's on the 12th of, of, of December. But you might want to do an action of your own. Um, and again, you know, whether wh wh whichever denomination you are, I think it's still with the Church of England and the Catholic Church, it's still a appropriate uh, that we um, that we we actually push keep pushing this message forward and then you could write to your parish priest or um, the bishop of any you know any of the dioceses that are not already um, divested um, and then I would really encourage you to visit there there's a lot of um, material on CCA, uh, CCA website, Operation NOAA, clearly, that their campaign right now, you can get um, the, um, you can get, get the, a lot of information on the Bright Now campaign. So that Bright Now is the campaign of Operation NOAA, specifically related to divestment. And then also the Laudato Si websites, uh, website. So that's, that's a very good source of, of information as well. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, I think, I suppose many of you will have already seen this film, The Letter. So it's had 8.2 million views. And um, I, th I think that what I haven't actually joined a Catholic church here. I'm, I've been going to the Methodist church. So I've just moved up to Scotland um, in Stirling. So I'm, I'm not really part of a, a community up here of, or a church. But if you if you are, then uh, you might want to have a, a, a sort of group viewing of, of the letter, because what it is really good. In, in fact, Lorna Gold, who's the chair of the Laudato Si movement board, she um, she 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 was at a, a screening of this uh, Laudato Si, uh, sorry, the, the letter. And and it was there was this guy and it, it does make me feel quite emotional to say this, but sometimes you just think these hard-hearted businessmen you know he, he this guy who's a big fund manager really influential and he's he had tears rolling down his face and what he he said was he just didn't join the dots he just didn't understand what that his his actions in the financial world financing fossil fuels and all these different um uh, these huge funds that he was financing were actually impacting the earth and and poor people so negatively. He just didn't get it until he saw this film. So it's a really good film for people who are climate deniers, whether they're soft climate deniers or hard climate deniers. It's a really good film. So I would encourage you to to look at that. And then just ending on. Um, and Pope Francis uh, comment from 2019. Now is the time to abandon our dependence on fossil fuels and move quickly and decisively towards forms of clean energy and a sustainable and circular economy. So there you have it. You know, why, why, why the churches should be ignoring this, I have, I have no idea. But um, that's what we're, we're here to do to try and get them to see the way. So I hope um, I've given you an idea of what CCA have been doing to push this forward and, and hopefully inspired you to do, um, to get involved yourselves.